Hello my friends, my name's Aaron from RC Scale Models and today we have another kit review. This one's from Ravel. It's a level 5, it's 148 scale. It's the Tornado GR4, it's the farewell edition, which is basically because the uh, aircraft is retired now from the RAF. So this is the uh, farewell edition. Um, it says it's new, but it's not. It's just their new range of box and stuff, but it's just a uh, re-released kit of they've done previously. This is 2020 release, but the original kit to this was released back in 2014, new tooled. Then they re-released the kit again, second time in 2015. As a GR4 on its own. Um, and then they got released again, 2017. As the Tornado F3 AVD, which is the uh, advanced something or other. I'm not sure what it actually means, the AVD version. Uh, and then it got released again, 2020, just before this one, which is the Tornado German one. Uh, and then this, I uh, say, so this is the 2020 version again for the farewell for the RAF. Uh, we we'll take a look while we get inside the box. It's a typical uh, Revell side opening box. I think their boxes are absolute crap. They're soft. You can't put too many kits on one another in your stash because they end up getting squashed. This is already beaten up a bit, a little bit. Um, here's the dimensions of your kit. It's 148. It's 280 parts. Kit length is 36 centimeters in and the uh, wingspan is 28.6 centimeters. We have some of the uh, uh, pictures of the uh, kits that built up already by Ravel. Advertisement for their colors. You're gonna have to do your references if you don't use their colors. I don't like Ravel colors. I think they're a little thick and gloopy. Uh, kit number is 03853, which is Numbers down the bottom there. As I say, it's a side opening box. I'm not a fan of your side opening box. So here's your worksheet. Uh, we have decals on the inside. We'll take a look at those in a minute. So we have a nice thick book. It's quite a lengthy build. If you built your tornado already in the past, by Ravel, you know pretty much what you're in for. Uh, so this is all your icons and steps. Uh, these are the icons for the steps, what they mean. Ravel colours. This is why I don't like Ravel colours as well, because you have to do a lot of mixing. There are manufacturers already out there that have the direct colours. Your sprue map. These parts are not needed. These are more parts. So again, we're starting off straight away with the ejector seat. Unfortunately, the uh, seat belts are moulded in. I will be uh, changing this out probably for a resin seat and stuff, and Edward seat belts and stuff. I'll be do doing that kind of thing, and I probably will be buying the uh, Fado Edge cockpit set for this as well. But this is what you get straight out of the box. You'd be working on the lower cockpit floor. You have to drill out some holes. It doesn't actually say what size holes they are, but if you're what these holes mean, go to page 20, sorry, page 62 and 63, and it shows you what those holes mean. So if we jump to sorry, those steps, which is 62, 62 and 63 is for these rails. So this is what you're drilling those holes out for. Uh, the cockpit tub. You'd be painting it up and stuff, but like I say, I'll be replacing it for a photo etch. You've got your two seat belts for your pilot and your wizzo. Instrument binnacles and, and dash and whatever. Again, I will be replacing this all. You'll be uh, working on the inside of the intakes. You've got your first stage compressors. Sandwiching it together. Once you've built up your cockpit, you've got your two front sides being sandwiched together. A couple of holes again. 
drilling out for like pitot tubes and whatever and stuff. Uh, your gun or your cannon going in. You've got more structural side parts of the aircraft. We have parts of the uh, side of the aircraft, which is part to do the intake. Number 16 is working on your wings. Um, they're asking for you to cut these tabs off. This is where you're going to stick your flaps. Having your flaps in the down position, if you wish to do so. Attaching your mechanism for the uh, folding wings. They're asking you not to glue it so it, the wings can be movable. Um, you've got your T-shape mechanism for the uh, wings to slot them into place. These triangle piece shapes are for what version you're doing. You're having your wings out or the swept wing. I like it a tornado in a swept wing. It looks nice and sleek and fast. Uh, we have structural parts inside your wing. These are the upper wing services. They're asking for you to paint certain segments, certain colours. But you can deal with that once you get to it. These are the uh, pieces that are for the folding wing. I believe on the real aircraft, this is like some form of rubber fabric thing. So the wings are slot into into it. Mm, this piece are internal parts, but I believe I'm not sure what that is though. These side pieces are on the side. They're asking for you to put on decals and stuff, which is the uh, angle of the swept wings. This is the upper plate and the spine of the aircraft, which is here. Flipping it over, attaching the uh, lower wing sections, which has got the uh, lines in it, which mimic the uh, angle again for the swept wing. Both sides, working on the back of the aircraft, you've got the housing before your engines go into this is part of the engine system this is the engine system these are the, the engines like the uh, after burner rings and stuff um, you can buy complete resins stuff for this as well Edward do it all putting your engines in going back to the front putting your nose in it's always backwards and forwards in the instructions but you can work your way through it and do it how you wish but this is how they've done theirs, working on the tail. Um, not sure what that piece is. We have, looks like the rudder. This is up on the uh, tail as well. These are thin little things. Again, two options. We've got clear lights going in as well. These are structural parts at the back. The flaps on the front of the wings. Your tail going in, repeating the process again. We have air brakes. These weird pieces here are for the reversed thruster covers to go over the engines. Um, I recommend when you do this is what step is it? Uh, yeah, instead of doing this piece here and, and trying to slide them down the side of the engines, is if you leave. Um, yeah, just before you put this, once you've built this up, before you slot this in, on the side here are the, these tabs. Those tabs is what these slot into. So if you slot these into, slot these onto here first, and then you can slide the whole thing in. It's easier to get them trying to slide them in, if you know what I mean. It's easier just to build that up and then slot it in. Why they didn't tell you to do it that way, I don't know. But again, it's optional if you want them open or closed we have the covers for the engines these are the uh, hard points for your weapons and bombs and everything else and fuel tanks so pay attention you've got different ones for different different loadouts uh, they're asking for you not to glue glue them in for some reason maybe for interchangeable if that's the case but that, that might be a nice touch Again, like I mentioned before, running on that step is for those rails, therefore external weapons as well. This is your landing gear, pretty simple, attaching your wheels, 
navigators, the navigator door comes as one piece. If you're having it closed, you just slot it in as normal, like here. If you're having the door or landing gear down, you're going to have to slice your landing gear in half to get the two halves, which is not a problem. These are the main landing gears, come as two, set, two halves. These are extra pieces on the side of the aircraft, attaching your landing gear and your wheels. Again, if you're having the landing gear up, it's just one cover, it's pretty simple. But attaching your side landing gear, you'd leave all this landing gear towards the end. This is how I prefer to do mine. You attach in your side uh, refuel probe, the windshield going in. The main windshield has got this framing down the bottom half. If you're having the canopy open, you leave it like this. But if you're having the canopy closed, these pieces that stick up, you've got to cut, cut flush, cut them off. Uh, this piece here, I'm not sure what that is. You have your arrestor hook. I didn't think the tornado could land on an aircraft carrier, but obviously um, it must do because it's got a arrestor hook. I didn't think the tornado had a arrestor hook. That's, that's something I didn't know about the aircraft. Your main canopy, you've got uh, internal um, mirrors, by lots of things. This is having the canopy closed, the canopy open. Going to the front again, you've got fine detail parts like aerials and pitot tubes. I'd leave all this towards the end so you don't break them off. These are your weapon loadouts. So we have Zap Zoom 107 Pod. I don't know what that's for. I'd have to look in my reference book and read up on it and find out what this weapons are. We have a Sky Shadow Pod. I don't know what that's for. 1500 litre fuel tank. Uh, 2250 uh, fuel tank we have your sidewinders or, or sparrows I'm not sure which ones it carries um, again don't forget to paint them up and put your decals on uh, this is your option of loadout of what you want to want it what you want the aircraft to carry and then you go into your first paint scheme this scheme here is one of my favorites this is the uh, farewell scheme for 2019 when the aircraft was hired from the 9th Squadron Royal Air Force. Pretty cool. It's the RF Grey and it's got the Batman type logo, I call it. And this is the uh, hard points and weapons loadout for it if you wish to load it up. Again, this is another reason why I bought this kit because I wanted to do a tornado with a wraparound camouflage. This is the throwback to the old style early tornadoes from the Cold War era and stuff with the wraparound camouflage. This one is, um, doesn't say what squadron it's at, but it's uh, 2009, but it is World Air Force. Again, hard points and weapons. Again, this is another scheme I like. I like all three schemes, so it is a tricky one which one to do. This one's from number 31 Squadron, Royal Air Force. They're all from the same place. Um, this is a, Again, this is another farewell scheme, 2009. As I say, I think all three schemes are farewells because it is a farewell aircraft after all. Uh, again, this is all grey, black tail with the star, which is pretty cool. And the hard points and weapons. And that's it. It's quite a lengthy book. Might be a little bit lengthy video, I do apologise about this. These are your decals. Nice decent sheet, they're nicely printed. They are printed in Italy, I so imagine they might be cartograph, I'm not 100% sure. But if they are, they should be nice. They are, not. I wouldn't call them flat. But they're like semi and seem nice and thin. Carrier film is very minimal, even down to these ones here. There's no carrier film in the middle, so when taking these off, you're gonna to have to be careful they don't wrinkle up. There is a carrier film inside the middle of these ones. I think that's meant to be like that because it's got like this slight hint of grayness to it, and 
it's got like white texture to it I don't know if you can actually see that on camera but we've got the stars the background logo as I call it the uh, tornado symbols the aura symbols your all your stencil data which is pretty cool we do have instrument panel uh, decals and stuff but as I say I'll be swapping it out for the uh, Fado Itch so it's pretty cool as for the kit it's going to be pretty much what you've seen already if you've built the tornado already in the past you pretty much know what you're in for I have a couple of tornadoes in my stash. Uh, I've got to get around to building one. Clear parts don't seem no no issues. They're nicely done. We've got your main canopy. It's got the uh, deck cord going running through the center. Um, it is recessed, so it'll probably take a whitewash just to uh, make that show. There is no center seam, which is a nice touch to take care of. You've got your lights and whatever. Just put this back in the bag before I end up forgetting and breaking it and damaging it. Main parts is easy to fix, but clear parts, if you break them or damage them, they're pretty much near enough impossible to uh, fix. So we have this bag here, it contains all kind of parts always check your bag just in case you get loose parts come off Revell are pretty good normally they uh, stick those in several bags so they're pretty good so we have this section nice detail panel lines and rivets all crisp and clean Here's part of the spine of the aircraft. Again, panel rivets is all nice and clean. This is that black mark. I don't know what that is, but it sh should be all right. We have those rails, even down to the rivets and stuff. It is. I do uh, like this kit. Oh, we've got another spine here. So you're going to have to pay attention in your booklet just in case you've got differences between the two spines. Oh, let's turn it around. You can see the difference in, in within the spines. There are different different rivets in different places. This one's got the hatch and this one hasn't. So there is there is differences. Nose cone is moulded as one piece, so there's no seam line. There's a little bit of flash, but it's not, uh, nothing to take care of. It's no problem. We have your, your wings. Nice detail on the wings. There's your nose cone again. It's nicely done. We have some more of these hard points, I think these are. Again, nice detail. Should take a wash nicely. We have this lower section of the aircraft landing gear goes in here the sides these are the engine parts and hard points so again is what you get for detail panel lines and rivets it's nice and crisp and clean should build up to a nice aircraft i believe Ravel make one of the best tornadoes out there is part of the engine system remember these two halves go together and these tabs that sit at the bottom here you want to slot those pieces onto and then slide the whole engine in it'd be easier to do it that way like I mentioned before this should be no problem these look like weapons and fuel tanks
So we have this is cockpit interior, so this is your jet to seat, and the cushions. It's got the seat belts molded in, but as I say, I'll be replacing this with resin probably and fellow etching and stuff. I'll be doing that. These are those pieces that go onto your engines. There's the rail for the jet to seat. There should be another one of those because there is two seats after the wall. This is in another bag. We have one of the, one of the fuel tanks. Again, nice detail. Looks pretty good. Should make up nicely. And this one here is another fuel tank. And you got your missile, your wheels, your fuel tank, your afterburner rings, and the engines. Actually, there's two missiles there on this one. Your hard points, your fins. Um, and there's one of those pods. And the attachment points for it. So that's, that's nicely done. Actually, there's two, two lots of these. So in this bag here is exactly the same as what we just looked at. And then we have the main bulk of the aircraft now. Certainly well packaged there. So we have here, there's that T section for your wings to clip into. These pieces here are part of the intake section. So this is the uh, back, and this is the front of the aircraft. Um, should go together nicely. This is part of the fuselage as well. Nice detail, rivets, panel lines. Nice and crisp and clean. This is the front part of the intakes. These are the uh, more more structural parts. I think these are to do with the flaps. These are looks like them slide molded the way they've got them situated. These pieces are for the canopy. There's that rester hook. Strangely enough, I didn't think the tornado had a had a hook on it, but it, this one has. I'm going to have to check my references and read up on it. So here we have the engines, uh, compressor rings, tail, flaps. So we have all fine detail parts here. These are your flaps. They look nice, crisp and clean. We have part of your internal wheel bay. Looks quite basic but I think that's pretty much how it is if you need to uh, add wiring and stuff or piping shouldn't shouldn't be a problem anyway I think it's pretty good we have a couple of sink marks on these um, compressor rings or fan blades which is a bit of a shame but I don't think you're going to see them down the uh, intakes anyway but if you do it should be a little bit of a shame the tail doesn't look too bad Panel lines and rivets, nice and crisp and clean on both sides. Here's one of your instrument panels. It is nicely detailed, but I, again I'll be replacing it with Fellow Edge probably. Here's part of your front wheel, um, wheel well. Here is the um, back part of the engine. And this is your main wings, your folding wing section and cockpit tub. So here's one of your main wings. They asked him to remove these tabs for some range re reason. Um, here's the lower wing section. Again, nice detail. You've got a flap going in here, both sides. We have this is part of the intake as well. These sections, these two here, intakes, part of the intake. Again, nice detail. And 
just hoping it goes together nicely because um, it looks pretty good but looks can always be deceiving M more instrument panels this little bit of a bulkhead this is part of the uh, wheel well I think these are the landing landing gear doors wheel well doors this is what you get for a cockpit tub this is nicely done So there you are, my friends. There's another kit from Ravel 148 scale Tornado GR4 Farewell. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.